Good morning. It's Wednesday, March 1st, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, From What to Why and Everything in Between. And our scripture is Exodus chapter 34. So Moses chiseled out two tablets of stones like the first one. Early in the morning he climbed Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, and he carried the two stone tablets in his hands. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and stood there with him, and he called out his own name, Yahweh. The Lord passed in front of Moses, calling out, Yahweh, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy, I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generations. I forgive iniquity, rebellion, and sin, but I do not excuse the guilty. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children and grandchildren. The entire family is affected even children in the third and fourth generations. There's a statement which, in essence, is deeply ingrained in American culture and is unquestionably anti-Christian. It uncovers just how far we can drop from the tree of faith. The statement, or its equivalent, is thus, Nobody can tell me what to do. It's my life. There are two responses to that statement which make it a logical non sequitur. First, your life would be yours alone if you didn't belong to someone else. Secondly, your life's actions would have no consequences if the one who owns you didn't connect you to everybody else, including your family tree. The first response comes from the unquestionable fact that you didn't create yourself. Your parents had a hand in things. But it was God who formed you in the womb and breathed the breath of a soul into your bones. God said so in his meeting with Moses. Yahweh, the Lord, he is the creator, owner of it all. The second response is about consequences of what we do, which Yahweh also covered in the agenda with Moses. The quote-unquote document he chiseled in stone covered the basic details of human behavior. We call it the Ten Commandments. We venerate them, and to a person, we violate them. And when we transgress those, we set up misery for those who follow, even to the third and fourth generation. Of course, there is a positive side to view in this. When we are obedient to God's ways, we set up blessing to the generations that follow. However, adopting the current culture's mindset of, I'm the only one that matters, I'll do what I want. It's hardly a formula for blessing. Suppose that, quote-unquote, what I want is to become an alcoholic-addicted bank robber. Think of the tentacles that reach into the wake of your actions for the many humans of the world's population, and imagine your children and theirs living with the fallout from that heritage of your behavior. When it comes to communicating a message of God's love and our responsibility to respond with godly living, people want to know why they should be subjected to living within so many rules. Well, you have questions and you want answers. God, the sovereign Lord of the universe and all it holds, has those answers from the what to the why and everything in between. For you today. Do you remember what your father or mother, or perhaps both of them, said to you when you asked the why question as a little child? They said, because I said so. You didn't like that. It wasn't enough. But now you understand. They were only repeating what God said. He said to Moses and all of us, that stuff I wrote on those stone tablets, you do it, because I am said so. Eat you on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.